Hey everybody, welcome back. Am I the a-hole for making the bride feel ugly because I looked too good? Let's find out. We're gonna try something a little different. Some of you, uh, actually a lot of you, have been asking me to react to am I the a-hole posts on Reddit because let's be honest, that thread is popping. So if you like that thread, if you like these videos, make sure you leave a like and maybe we can do this like as a like weekly thing or something. Okay? Cool. Cool Charlotte. Nice. Am I the a-hole for dressing nicer than the bride at my cousin's wedding? I got invited to my cousin's very small wedding, which was last week. I had never met her before the wedding, so I knew it was important to make a good impression. I also have deep insecurities about how I look due to being bullied as a child, so I always need to look as nice as possible when I'm going out, even just for coffee. So far, so good. I started planning what I would wear immediately. The invite said cocktail attire, and I settled on a T-length dress I had worn to other people's weddings, with matching colored chiffon shawl and flaps, as well as a real pearl necklace and earrings. Classy. I didn't buy anything new for this, just did my best with what I had. I made sure my makeup was decent and didn't clash, and made sure to get my hair cut a week before the wedding so it would look its best as well. Well, I think I was the only one at her wedding that cared how they looked. Most of the 30 guests were in t-shirts, polos, and shorts. I was one of the two guests wearing a dress. The bridesmaid wore something that looked like it was out of Hot Topic. <laughs> Oh, it was one of those weddings, eh? All right, all right. That could be fun. No hate, whatever. The groom wore a tuxedo shirt and black jeans. The bride wore, holy hell. The bride wore a custom gothic dress that looked like a purple, red, and black patchwork dress. Her hair was not brushed. She did black makeup so heavily that you could barely see her face. I was shocked. God, I wish I could see a picture of that. Sorry, there's a fucking garbage truck outside as if this day isn't hectic enough. Y'all just need to listen to that garbage truck. All right, remind you to take out the trash. Like it is so fucking loud. Several people came up to me during the reception to say that I looked nice, but was upstaging the bride, which was not my intention. The bride herself was quiet the whole night. I tried to get to know her as that was what she requested, but she wasn't interested. The I thought garbage day was yesterday. What the <laughs> How much garbage do we make? A lot. The wedding ended and on my way home, I got flooded with calls from her mother and new husband that I was a horrible person for dressing like Grace Kelly and going out of my way to make the bride feel ugly at her own wedding. I didn't, I just can't go somewhere, especially to what I thought was a formal event, looking less than my best. Unfortunately, you're not really responsible for other people's insecurities, are you? Like what would have happened? Let's say that this was like a formal event and everyone was dressed up and you showed up to the wedding looking less than your best. It would seem like disrespectful a little bit, wouldn't it? Like weddings are the few events where you actually have to like dress up. Usually if it says cocktail attire, it means they want you to dress up and it's disrespectful to show up in like a t-shirt and jeans. Unfortunately, you can't control people's insecurities, but like I can't help it in my uniform. <laughs> Literally though. That's, that's how I feel about it. All right, let's see what the Redditors had to say about this. Today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. Protect your data online and get access to the best content in the world using a virtual private network. And the fastest virtual private network on the market is without a doubt NordVPN. And if you don't believe me, it's fine, but like they've done speed tests, so. NordVPN is perfect for VPN newbies because it's really easy to use. You can connect with just one click or enable auto connect for zero click protection, which makes accessing blocked content in your country super easy. So for example, I can't actually access Hulu in Canada. I know, super annoying, especially since I really wanted to check out this TV show that my friend acted in. But I can access Hulu by changing my location using NordVPN. NordVPN is available on every single major platform. Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and Linux. And even your Android TV supports NordVPN. All right, listen up for this month's promo. Listen, I'm talking to you. Go to nordvpn.com slash Charlotte Dobre to get a two year plan plus an additional month with a huge discount. It's risk free with NordVPN's 30 day money back guarantee. All right, thank you to NordVPN once again for sponsoring us. Now let's get back to the video. Not the a-hole. If the invite said cocktail attire, why was every other guest dressed for a barbecue? Why was the groom in jeans? And by tuxedo shirt, do you mean a shirt designed to be worn with a tuxedo or, and this is what I'm picturing, a t-shirt with a tuxedo printed on it? You were definitely dressed appropriately in my opinion. I'm not fancy enough to know whether T-length dresses are long for cocktail attire. I would however focus on the fact that you thought you were dressed appropriately for a wedding rather than you desired to look your best. I mean, that's a good point. That's definitely a good point. The former makes this an unhappy misunderstanding. The latter makes this seem like you were prioritizing your appearance to the extent that you could feasibly try to upstage a bride. That is a very good point. Very reasonable, if I may say so. The point should be that you want to show up to a wedding and you want to be respectful of that wedding's 
clothing requirements. Not, I want to look really, really good. You know what I mean? But really, who cares? Like, I mean, that's a fine line, I guess. Not really too big of a deal, in my opinion. And this right here is your reminder to subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe and I'll never do that again. All right, crossing my toes. Also to piggyback off of this, if the bride was happy with her outfit choice and makeup and hair, it shouldn't matter because she should have loved what she wore to the wedding. It's not your fault she didn't wear an outfit that she loved. That's a good point. Your wedding is one of the few times that you can get that beautiful outfit you'd never wear again. Like why didn't she get something in a more traditional style if she was so easily upstaged by your outfit? To me, it didn't really sound like there was too many bells and whistles to your outfit. It kind of sounds more like the bride didn't like what she wore and and she took it out on you, unfortunately. All right, so as you can probably tell, Reddit has deemed this person not the a-hole. So there you go. Order, order, what I say goes. I'm gonna get that mallet. I'm gonna get, you know those judge mallets? I'm gonna get one. Maybe I'm gonna get one right now. <laughs> Just head on over to Amazon. Judge mallet. <laughs> Let's see, is it gonna show up? Oh my God, it's there. Okay, but it's like a hundred bucks. Oh, well this one's 30 bucks. All right, all right. Oh, this one's good. Okay, we'll get this one. Here's what we'll do. If you like Am I the A-hole videos, like this video and then I'll get the judge mallet. All right, it's up to you, not me. All right, moving on. Am I the a-hole for pretending to get fired when customers get a temper with me? I'm a high schooler with a weekend job at a coffee shop. My coworkers who work weekends are. James, the owner's son, he goes to my school. He's a shift manager, but it's not a real formal thing. He's a friendly guy. Danielle, a college student who sometimes works weekends too. So sometimes customers will come in and just be angry about such little stuff, like literally blow up about nothing. You don't say, I've never heard of that happening, what? I don't know if they're in a bad mood already and looking for something to take it out on or what, but it's a lot. Like how sad do you have to be to be a grown ass man taking your anger out on high school and college kids. That's a good point. I ask myself this question every time I react to Karen's. Who hurt you? How did you get to this point? We're here to help. So James and I were joking about having a little fun with them and hopefully getting them off our backs. So one day I was at work and some guy was having a temper tantrum about how we don't make the coffee hot enough, which I couldn't do a thing about because I gave it to him right out of the machine. So James came in and was like, sir, is there a problem here? And the guy started ranting at him too. So he was just like, OP, this is unacceptable. You're fired. I started acting real sad and said, no, please don't fire me. My family needs the money. I need this job, please. And he played up being a hard telling me to take off my apron and leave. The angry guy started to backtrack like it's not that big of a problem. You don't need to fire her over it. I didn't mean it. And James was like, no, we pride ourselves on the best customer service. Of course, after all that drama, I still had my job. We were just acting. Oh. God of mischief. And we've done it a couple times. Whenever a customer will lose their temper at Danielle or I, James will storm in and fire us. And almost every time the person who had come in angry will apologize and say that they didn't mean it. It's kind of satisfying making people realize their actions might actually have consequences. I'm shocked. Anyways, I was telling my friends from school about this and a few of them thought it was a mean prank to let someone go away thinking they'd gotten someone who desperately needs the money fired. Am I the a-hole for this joke? I kind of love it. That's kind of like petty revenge with like a little bit of a side of like drama class. <laughs> Gosh, I wish I did this when I worked in retail. But if it's a small coffee shop, it's different than like a big corporate conglomerate. You know what I'm saying? I think y'all can probably get away with this sort of thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with not the a-hole. I think that's kind of fun. Because like, there's so many Karens that wanna speak to the manager and they threaten to get people fired. But like, do they actually try to get people fired? As a matter of fact, they do. People are working these dead end jobs, probably because they don't really have a choice. I did what I had to do. Probably because they really need the money. Maybe they're down on their luck. Maybe they're just like kind of at this point in life where not everything is working out and they just took, you know, one of these jobs where you gotta deal with Karens on a day to day basis because they need it. But it's interesting to know that the people that you've played this prank upon are sorry. I kind of love it. I love it a lot. All right, all right, all right, all right, let's see. Order, order. Judgment time. We shall decide if this person is an a-hole by looking at everyone else's responses and catering our response to that response. <laughs> Not the a-hole, that's the perfect way of dealing with hostile customers. Agreed, and when the hostile customers try to backtrack, what they say makes it worth it. OP's tactic hopefully teaches them to stop complaining to service workers about things out of their control. I disagree. Just like giving a kid a cookie when they throw a temper tantrum simply reinforces that behavior. Rewarding customers when they explode teaches them that ranting and raving gets results. So they'll show up to another store or restaurant, something will tick them 
them off and then they'll blow up again expecting employees to also bend over backwards. Or I won't hesitate to have you fired. I've done it before. I mean, that's kind of a good point. With great power comes great responsibility. But if the customers are backtracking, it means they didn't like the results. So it's not reinforcement. As you can probably tell, Reddit has dubbed this person not the a-hole. I think it's a harmless prank, really. Whatever. Just a way of getting back at the Karens and maybe making them think twice about speaking to the manager and getting that little kid fired. You know what I'm saying? Next, ew. Let's look for an a-hole, eh? Am I the a-hole for asking my wife to stop mispronouncing our son's name? My wife and I are Mexican-American. I'm third generation and she came here when she was eight. As a result, she's quite a bit more Hispanic than me. And we've clashed at times because I'm apparently insufficiently enthusiastic about my heritage. After we got married, we agreed that we'd have two kids and take turns naming them. She went first and gave our daughter a fairly traditional name, Rosa Maria. Last year, our son was born. I named him Daniel. Ever since he was born, she's been calling him by the Spanish pronunciation of his name with an emphasis on the N. Damn, Daniel. Kind of like Daniel instead of Danielle. Okay, Danielle. Okay, all right. Learn some Spanish today. <laughs> she also calls him Danny, while I call him Danny. Daenerys Stormborn of House Targaryen. She introduces him as Danielle to everyone else, and now everyone's just following her pronunciation, which also is probably her accent. I'm sorry, what? Which is frustrating because it was my turn to name the baby and I feel like she didn't respect my choice. What are you smoking? All right, I already know where this is going. When I confronted her, she said she doesn't want our kids to have anglicized names because they're Mexican. I mean, it's not that I have a problem with them having Spanish names. I don't call Rosa Maria Rose or Rosemary, but it was as agreed, my turn to name Daniel and she should respect the fact that I didn't factor in our heritage while naming him. Am I the a-hole for wanting my son's name pronounced the way I intended it to be pronounced? Yeah, I feel like you're being a bit weird. I feel like you need to chill out. <laughs> All right, so even if she's an immigrant and she's lost her accent, you're still gonna pronounce things a certain way. My mom's Italian. My mom calls me Charlotte, not Charlotte. Like that's literally what she calls me, Charlotte. It doesn't mean that my name is Charlotte, it's Charlotte. It's just pronounced differently, kind of depending on your accent, kind of depending on, you know, where you're from. I don't see why it's an issue. Also, please do not call me Charlotte because I literally think that I'm in trouble every time I hear that. It's like PTSD. Charlotte! That's what I would hear whenever I didn't clean up. So don't say that ever. <laughs> All right, we have an edit. There's always an edit where people are like, oh, maybe I didn't share too much information and I kind of feel like an a-hole. So now let me just give some more context. A few of the comments say she might just have difficulty pronouncing Daniel the way I prefer, but isn't telling me. She speaks English with a very clear American accent. Her Spanish is a bit accented, but way less than say her parents. We've, <laughs> you just, you sound kind of dumb. I'm sorry, this is dumb. I'm gonna stop you right there. <laughs> this is literally so dumb. We've been married five years and together for eight, she would tell me if it was about pronunciation instead of identity. Also, she's very proud of and not the least bit insecure about her ethnicity, so she would never be too ashamed to admit she prefers her natural accent. I'm not gonna rudely probe into it and try to get her to confess what it really is about. Also, I don't want to die on this hill and neither does she. We're not even fighting about this. We had a simple disagreement about whether we should pronounce my son's name the way I wanted it to be pronounced when I chose it or in a way that acknowledged his ethnicity. Why do you have such a problem with acknowledging his ethnicity? Like, I, I actually don't see why that's an issue. All right, so as you can probably tell, Reddit has dubbed this person the a-hole. You're the a-hole, you named him Daniel. She calls him Daniel. Why do you want her accent to somehow disappear when speaking our son's name? Ta-da! It's, it's gone. She should respect the fact that I didn't factor in our heritage while naming him. What on <laughs> earth is that, my dude? Like what the fuck is your problem? Chill out. I know that you guys aren't having like a fight about this, but this is <laughs> a little bit unreasonable. What's your issue? Do you need a tissue for your issue? When I confronted her, she said she doesn't want our kids to have anglicized names because they're Mexican. So we're just going to ignore this part. You know, the part where it clearly says that she deliberately is violating the spirit of their agreement. That's the a-hole opinion in my book, at least. How is this violating their agreement? He named him and she's pronouncing it the way she would say that name. He said that they never considered pronunciation when naming their kids. They're his kids and they're her kids too. They can each pronounce their kids' names how they'd like. Daniel is both an English and a Spanish name. It's not like she's calling him Danielo. <laughs> the vowels just sound different. It's not a big deal. I think that y'all should be happy about your heritage and you should want your kids to be happy about it too. Except not me. I don't want to be called Charlotte just because I have, I have issues with that. <laughs> Charlotte! Okay, sorry. Alrighty, guys, tell me. Do you feel like these people are the a-holes? Do you feel like they're not the a-holes? Let me know everything, uh, all of your thoughts. I wanna know everything, everything. All of your thoughts in your head, put them into the comment section right now and make the engagement of this video go up so this video goes viral and I make money. Subscribe! I got something that you